journals are, are in an interesting place to try to think about how to how to support this and how to support the process of what they're doing. So I think that including opportunities for research pieces that are not what we think of as standard research discussion. Um, things that talk more about process that allow students or faculty, student pairs, to reflect on what the research process they engaged in was and to share even occasionally the things that didn't work. And to have that be an acceptable, approved journal article becomes a really powerful thing. It, I think it allows, they would then be encouraging and allowing researchers, undergraduate researchers, to take risks and to have that be publicly supported in a research community and in a learning environment becomes very important. I think there are different levels at which journals and professional organizations can help support mentoring of undergraduate research and the development of effective mentoring practices. From the stance of, I guess, the president being the president of ISODL, it is important for conferences to create a venue, a space, a uh, uh, not necessarily physical, but but provide dialogue, opportunities for dialogues around these central questions and perhaps create opportunities where there's a concentrated um, collection, if you will, a gathering of people who are working in in this area and have an opportunity to intersect to exchange ideas, to learn from each other, and then to form collaborations internationally to further develop the field and draw attention to it. I could say that this process has brought attention to many areas of research in traditional research areas when something like this is featured as, as a thread in a conference or a featured thread in the conference. I, I think that the societies themselves Disciplinary societies themselves can also most certainly draw attention to those practices and processes that promote effective mentorship, that develop effective mentorship through those disciplinary lenses. And I think that's just as important and critical and impo for, I think, academic identity, first and foremost, is formed through that disciplinary lens. And validation by disciplinary societies is important for continued attention and development of, of this in relation to areas like sciences, humanities, social sciences, and, and professions like nursing and business as well. At Bridgewater State University, my home institution, we publish a journal of undergraduate research. You know, the cover this year um, is the work of a, of a metalworking art major, um, and her artist statement appears in that journal. And we have creative writing next to, um, you know, a research brief from chemistry and things like that. So certainly to, to see the breadth of the research or the scholarly work, maybe it's a more inclusive term, going on on a campus or if it's abroad or then a campus journal. I also think they can broaden the scope please broaden the scope even further of how we're defining what counts as research so that we're including more disciplines. We're starting to look more at the idea of research as questioning and not necessarily as just straight methodological structures. I think that becomes really important because then undergraduates begin to see more and more across the spectrum of what I do has value, has meaning, and is part of learning. It's part of this questioning process that I think provides the foundation of all the research activities that we all want to do. I think journals have quite a special role in supporting undergraduate research because firstly they can motivate students, they can make them think I could actually get my work published. But that's only the start of a student's journey in terms of disseminating their research. I think it's important that journals take the opportunity, especially electronic journals, of having um, people being able to leave comments and to be able to engage in a dialogue that goes beyond just the publication of a journal article. So it's not just seen as an end product and a finishing point, but it's actually a starting point for that students um, to, you know, to continue um, discussing the material and maybe they also have a role in curriculum. If faculty can see articles that are published in journals and use those in the curriculum, it inspires a further generation of students, not only to think that they could do research that will be published, but maybe to take some of the ideas 
and do a further year of study on them or to tweak the methodology and that kind of thing so that it's kind of it's broader than just a dialogue really it's not just talking about things it's actually contributing to the literature more significantly and I think journals um, that have a, an online presence are in a really good position to do that. Journal editors uh, really can uh, focus um, some of their issues or some of their calls uh, for papers on uh, issues of diversity in undergraduate uh, research and undergraduate research mentoring. I think sometimes it's just the invitation and the, the, the framing of some of those calls that would start to get at some of those particular issues that might make some scholars and researchers and artists feel as if they had an entree into uh, undergraduate research and best practices of that. Uh, so I think special calls, um, special editions, um, special conference topics, all of those kinds of things may be very helpful. Um, you know, there might even be opportunities to really ask to set up a research agenda for uh, those involved in the undergraduate research community, um, is to uh, establish a program that asks for students from underrepresented populations to be your student researchers for the summer um, and to, to sort of study, to do a kind of meta study of we might be working on a particular research or scholarly topic or issue or question, but what else is happening within that group? And I think that's starting to happen a little bit, but I think some encouragement from places where people are placing their work um, may actually pay off. Journals do can have a, a very important role in catalyzing collaborations, um, furthering the research, not only through what one would normally expect, publishing the data, but again, by featuring certain issues on this area so that there's a concentration of perspectives and discussions that happen. And then that in itself should actually open the way for further development and uh, interaction, particularly amongst those that may not necessarily have been involved initially, but do have something to contribute. So. I think the combination of professional societies together with journals is absolutely essential in promoting this work. It can't be just done at individual institutional levels or a consortium of a small group of institutions.